All right. So, uh, welcome. This is week three, day one of general drawing. And there are some assignments. Uh, so we were talking about the homework and how to find that. So the homework is a document, it's a Google Doc, and it's on Blackboard. But when you click the link to the Google Doc, you'll see this, and it's called Course Assignments for FA 101, FA 108. Here's an introduction. It explains the process. Each week is already laid out. So it has week one through 15 listed and what's expected of you each class for homework, okay? Um, you can work ahead. You can choose to do homeworks that are drawing related or sculpture related. Um, you just want by the end to have 15 finished for each, one for each week. Some weeks I have two, so you may have extra, but a minimum of 15. Um, so it explains that here, and it also gives my email. I like you to email the homework if possible. Um, that just makes it easier for me to document and keep track of. So here's your homework for week two. For example, go to this museum and write a paragraph about an object, and many of you did do this already. Um, and I think I might have walked you through. So you click the link. You're at the Pitt Rivers Museum, and you can walk through this virtual space in the museum and you could select an object that you want to write about. It's a gorgeous museum and it's full of all kinds of interesting handmade objects and um, I mean it's just it's just really amazing. The more you're like this is feather work, everything's made out of feathers in this area. I mean you just can explore this entire um, museum virtually. Uh, so that's kind of a cool experience. Um, so, if you were to go um, into Blackboard, that's the assignment sheet. And so, week three, day one, the hallway drawing is your homework to complete by next class. Watch this link and it'll explain how to draw a hallway. Um, now, we're going to do a drawing in class today. Our class drawing is going to be our um, basic shapes. Uh, so we're going to be drawing, uh, last week we drew the sphere, this week we're going to be drawing platonic solids or other basic shapes like cylinders and cubes and pyramids. Um, and you'll have to find those in your house or you'll have to construct some to draw out of paper. So that'll be your choice. Uh, so we'll watch a little bit of that and then uh, so here is here are, is the Blackboard. Uh, so our course documents are here and I've added our project sheet. I've added a video for you to look at. And um, I think under the syllabus possibly, let me check. The syllabus, my office hours. In your class, okay. Under announcements, homework assignments week one through 15. That's the Google Doc we just looked at, okay? We're gonna look at our project sheet next. And this is the um, document that's in your Blackboard under project documents. Um, platonic solid shape drawing is the assignment for today. And we'll look at these at the end of the day at two o'clock for a little mini critique. Uh, so please read through the overview of the assignment. And here are some links to follow. Uh, the goals are to build your platonic solids or find some objects like a soup can, a cardboard box to draw today. Um, you're gonna arrange those shapes into a composition and then using the six values of light, you're going to draw those shapes, okay? Um, you're going to draw your composition on the paper then add shading to build up the shapes that will represent the shapes in your composition. You're going to draw with the illusion of depth and you're gonna shade the shapes as well as the environment around the shape. So um, we're going to use the method of drawing in this project that's called subtractive or reductive drawing. And I have some YouTube videos we'll watch on that. Okay, so it's homework assignments are under announcements. This basic shapes, uh, is under course documents. It's called subtractive drawing. It's project week three, day one here. 
And this is the YouTube video basic shapes that will go along with this assignment. So let's just take a moment and watch that. Now, did we see this video last week? Can anybody let me know? No, we haven't watched that one last week. Okay, thank you. Sorry. I just didn't want to be redundant. So this week we're going to create a border. Um, you can either tape it off on your paper or you can just draw a rectangle. You'll use the side of your charcoal to shade and then we're just gonna watch a little bit. I think I have this in high speed, maybe. If not, I will. We're looking for a light to medium gray. So he's taken the side of his charcoal, done a couple layers, blended it with his chamois. It shouldn't be dark gray and definitely not black. Make it as smooth as possible. Now remember, he's drawing a bit smaller. Now we're ready to make a drawing. We want to draw on our 18 by 24 paper if it's available to us. Start with a contour drawing of the still life. Include all details including shadows. Use a piece of scratch paper over the drawing to keep the charcoal off of your hand and protect the drawing from smudging. The first step, erase your lights, your highlights and reflected lights. I'm using a small pen type eraser, a white plastic eraser and a kneaded eraser. First, I'll erase the highlights and lights on this white sphere. Here, I'm erasing out the thin reflected light on the edge and blending and smoothing my shadow so that it looks like a natural transition from dark to light. I work my way around erasing all the light areas based on my observations from my subject. So you actually want to be looking at some objects. So set them up on your tabletop and draw them just as you see them. A strong lighting situation is good. So like my face is illuminated on the side. If you have a window or a lamp that you can put to the right or to the left of your object so that one side is in extreme light and one side is in shadow, that will really help you shade the forms. We're trying to draw from life with these. So look around your house, see if you can find some soup cans, some smaller boxes. If you can find anything that's cone shape or spherical, like a ball. He's using a nice brush to... Um, I mask edges with my scrap paper to add a smooth edge with more charcoal or erase charcoal on the edge. Fingers are great blending tools. He's using a charcoal pencil. We're using the vine charcoal. So this is the still life he's looking at. So you can uh, finish watching this video on your own, um, but you get the idea and you got to see him kind of work a bit. Um, you see how he protects the drawing. Um, the tape, your masking tape would work. This is blue gaffer's tape. This is wonderful tape, but it's a little more expensive. You should have tape in your kit. Um, this still life he set up. If you have a hard time telling the light from the dark, you can also take a picture with your phone and then edit it to be a black and white picture. And that picture can show you the different gray values and that can help you. Um, because it's nice if the objects are white, but if you're finding objects around your house, they might be various colors. Like the boxes may be, you know, purple or 
cardboard color and the soup can may have a label or if you take off the label the can may be reflective um, and so those add extra complications in a classroom setting we would spray paint everything like a gray color so that those colors wouldn't be distracting to you um, but since you're working at home um, using that black and white picture even though your objects may be in color and distracting using that black and white picture that's taken on your phone could be a guide for the value. So that's a really nice tool. Um, chat me up if you have any questions so far. And, um, or just uh, go ahead and shout out. Are there any questions? Okay. Oh, sorry. Uh, so um, our assignment is to draw a cube or just anything around our house? Yes, but a couple objects. So three objects may be minimum, four to five maximum, okay? Some of you are in my 3D design class, so you already have platonic solids. Those would be great to draw. I put in this document, um, a link to creating some platonic solid templates. So let's say you can't find anything that you want to draw in your home. Most of you will have a soup can or something, but if you print these templates out, you can make a pyramid out of paper, you can make a cube out of paper. These things will be very nice to draw, an octahedron. So within the um within this assignment sheet for today's assignment platonic shape drawing there are links to create your own own things to draw um that will take additional time which is okay um you can always show me the drawing next class if you're creating your own solids um, but if you find like a soup can maybe two or three soup cans, put one on its side, one on top, and then maybe a ball and a, a cardboard box, a smaller box. So three to five objects, and you're going to light them from the side so that like my face, there's a light area and a dark area. John, does that help explain? Yeah, oh, uh, just to clarify, um, let, let's say I have a cup, so does that mean I have to like draw a cylinder or something? Yes. Yes, right, if you have you. a mug or a cup, you'll be drawing circles in space. Yeah, if you don't have a chamois, a tissue is fine. And we're definitely going to draw 18 by 24 today. So unless you don't have your kit and you don't have your big paper and you're drawing in pencil, then you can draw smaller. But um, if you have your materials, I'd like you to draw large on that 18 by 24 paper, make a border, tone the paper, and draw the still lifes inside that. And because you're drawing large, the still life should be, the object should be life size or bigger, depending on how small your objects are in, in real life. These are great questions, guys. Just gonna check, there's no one still waiting to get in. Okay. Um, John, did you have any more questions? I, I keep talking. Uh. No, I'm fine, thank you. Okay, good. Yeah, so find something around your house, like a coffee mug, a soup can, a ball, okay? Um, if you like to get, you know, you can always build your own. If you like to get more in depth in a project, you can always build your own from the templates I've given you. So I wanted to show you my Pinterest. I also put a link to my Pinterest in the assignment sheet. And Pinterest is a tool that I use a lot. It's become less interesting over the last couple of years because they do have ads. Um, but I've accumulated quite a large um, amount of boards for each class. So I have a board that's called drawing class. So if you follow me, you can follow my board. And I have tons of examples of old master drawings that you can do copies of. Um, any, you know, examples of all the techniques we do in class. 
like even this would be interesting for today. This is showing how you shade a sphere, a cylinder, a cube, and a spiral using different methods, okay? These are like a chrome. These are different materials, but you know, showing you how to do the edges and stuff. So I have a lot of things like that that are helpful that show the different parts of light and different lighting situations. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, like you're gonna need a little bit of a, a drawing desk, right? Um, your drawing board will fit your 18 by 24 paper and that you can sit on your lap. Now, can everybody say to me, um in general did the drawing kit come came with a drawing board correct it should yes excellent thank you excellent so yeah you have a drawing board in your kit um that's a portable drawing desk so as long as you set that drawing board in your lap and you lean against a table and then you set your objects up on the table you should have a pretty good drawing space i know it's a little tight um, at school, we'd be drawing on easels. So we'd be standing or sitting on like a higher stool and we'd be drawing standing, um, which really lets you stand back and look at it. So my Pinterest is kind of fun. Uh, I also have a bunch of, this is me. So if you wanna find me, you can follow the link in the document for this project sheet. Um, there's a link for my Pinterest, or you can just find me by entering my name. You have to spell it correctly. And then my picture is here. It, this is me, and I'm sitting in a chair that I made. I can I weld as well, so I made that steel chair. Because um, I'm a sculptor. So I also have a, a topic called art demonstrations. So this has like, our basic value scale we did the first day. It has a little bit of perspective because um, our homework assignment, of course, will be to draw the hallway. So there's a little perspective in there. Um, it has another video on the subtractive method. Let's see if I can find it. This video is actually really good on the different parts of light if you want to review that. Um, but this, this is a nice video on the subtractive method. So before you start your drawing, if you wanted to do a warm up, this would be a great warm up to watch. It's um, it's from Savannah College Hi. Art. So I just want to talk about just how to manipulate charcoal on your page. Um, there's two we'll basic watch this techniques. For a minute. There's an additive technique and a subtractive technique. The additive technique is where you build up the surface by adding more media, and the subtractive technique is when you actually develop the surface by the removal. So when you go put this down on the page, you ever hold the charcoal with the pencil flat, almost parallel to the drawing surface. And start to just manipulate, manipulate it and put it down on the page in much broader strokes. And once it's down there, I just kind of take my hands and I start to incorporate the media into the surface of the page. Am I doing so? I'm not just going in one direction. I'm going in a lot of different directions. More circularly, one vertically, kind of horizontally. However, many, uh, I utilize as many directions as I need to so that I'm really working the media into that surface, into the tooth of the page. So I'm just pausing it here because I'd like to make a note. He is using compressed charcoal, which we do not use. The compressed charcoal is a much darker dark but we do the same method with the side of the charcoal and toning our paper with the vine charcoal. It just won't be as dark, but it also won't be as hard to remove. So I just wanted to like have that side note as we watch. You folks that that's something you don't feel comfortable with, you can use another tool like a paper towel or a soft piece of cotton. Uh, you can get a chamois cloth, anything that you can utilize to kind of start to move it around. Whatever you feel more comfortable with, these are all valid ways to manipulate the media onto the page. Um, sometimes if you're trying to get a, uh, a lighter gray, you don't want to go as dark as this. Sometimes you can take a paper towel 
and that little bit of media that's on the town can actually create an area of value that's still nice and rich and it's complete but it doesn't get as dark as using the stick directly um, to then start to manipulate the media you can use a white plastic eraser a kneaded putty eraser they both work very well plastic eraser though tends to take more media off and so if you want to take a large amount of the media off i'm going to use the white plastic eraser if i want to take just a little bit of the media i'm going to use a kneaded putty eraser kind of take it and just kind of warm it up in my hand a little bit and then as i kind of start to kind of pull it across that charcoal surface it allows me to take the media off but it doesn't take as much off as the white plastic eraser. And so what it allows me for allows me to do is to create some more subtle, gradual changes in the value. You know, when I'm trying to manipulate this around, um, I want you to think about charcoal as being a very fluid media. I mean, even as dark and as heavy and this really strong presence <clears throat> that it has on the page, it's still a very fluid media. Meaning if I had I'll say I got a shape here. And it was a circular shape. All of a sudden, I was looking at whatever I was drawing, and I, I realized that instead of it being circular, say it was a, a triangular shape, then I worked with the charcoal almost like it was clay, where if I need to take this into a triangle, I'm just going to pull off a little bit here and pull off a little bit here. And just as if it were you know, a clay, that little part that I just pulled off of here, I'm going to stick back up here. That part that I pulled off over here, I'm going to stick back right over here. And then I'm going to add some of it right back over to here. And so even though, again, it's very heavy, it's got a, a really uh, strong presence on the page, it's a very fluid media that you can move around really quickly. Um, is it ever going to come completely off the page? No. But odds are, even this residue that's here, it's going to be very rare that you ever have a completely white area in your drawings. And so sometimes when you first take it off, it can be a distraction where you see that residue. But odds are, another value, other charcoal is going to go back into that spot there. So. So that's just the introduction on how to move the charcoal around. Um, if I'm trying to get a really specific shape, say like in here, if I wanted a, a really fine shape, and I wanted to draw it with my eraser, can you see how the eraser's kind of rounded right here? So it's kind of tough because it's rounded to actually get a really defined shape. And so if I'm trying to get into a small area like that, I will maybe take and sharpen my eraser. I will cut off maybe maybe about a quarter of an inch so that now that I have now that I have a sharp edge on here I'm able to get into that shape and actually start to control it or she's going to control where my charcoal or not my eraser is a little bit more accurately and therefore I can actually start to define that shape a little bit more uh, define it a little bit more accurately um, I can also use a tool like my um, pencil, which has a, um, an eraser on the inside of it, so that if I need to get into a very small area, smaller surface area, kind of allows me to do some really nice, fine, detail work. And so you always got to be conscious of realizing whatever it is that you're trying to accomplish and making sure that you have a tool that is prepared 
to help you accomplish whatever that task is. Okay, that's just the introduction to charcoal. Go, all right. So now when we um, start to take and apply the theory of chiaroscuro, just a very basic shape to create the illusion of volume. The shape we're gonna use is a circle. And so what I'm going to do is start off with just a circular shape here. And I'm gonna leave a little bit of room so that I can have the cast shadow, and I can also have an environment around it. All right. What I wanna start off doing though, is instead of getting uh, distracted by the details, I'm gonna start with the highlight. I'm not gonna start with the penumbra area, or I'm not gonna start with the reflected light. I'm gonna start with the large areas of chiaroscuro. The three large areas are the light area, the umbra area, which is also called the core shadow, and the cast shadow. So I'm going to just take the side of my charcoal. It's very light when you begin. I'm not going to overcome it. Start to lay out where the area is going to be. And then also where the cast shadow is going to be. Always got to be an awareness of the entire picture plane. And so I'm going to also then think about that background or the environment that the object exists in. And the decision to make that background dark, it's simply since that cast shadow is here, I just wanted a dark value up here just to balance that out. I'm going to fast forward him a little bit just because we're running out of time. And even at this early stage, what I want to be able to do is right now, I just want to be able to see where the form is. So he ends up darkening this all quite a bit and then blending it. And this is what we did last week, so this is a bit of a review for you guys, but I just thought... What I want to emphasize is the subject. So a very active background can very easily distract from the subject, meaning I had a bunch of marks that were really active like this. My viewer, eye, my viewer's eye is going to go here, and it's po it could possibly compete with the focal point or the subject of the state. That happens. It's going to take it and just soften them back up. The marks stay there, but by reducing the contrast, they don't compete. <laughs> And that's a really good point because as you're toning the background, it's really easy to get these ghost kind of scribble marks if you're not orderly about how you lay the charcoal in the background. Um, and this is a review because he's drawing a sphere, but I liked his technique and how he talked about using the eraser more as a tool and cutting it to the shape you need um, and just making your tools work for you. Um, so you can watch this video more on my Pinterest if you're interested. And let's see, I think that's kind of the gist of it. So we're drawing big today. We're drawing in our vine charcoal. Um, you know, we have a couple of places to start. You can look through the Pinterest. You can um, read the, the project sheet for this project. And you can also construct your own shapes if you can't find anything around your house. Um, and then if you feel like you're really starting from the very beginning, I did have another video here. Let me screen share it as we end our, our class today. Um, and it is the link for that um, video is also in your assignment sheet. Um, but we'll just watch this as we're, we're headed out, and um, I will see you at 2 to 2.30, so give yourself a good couple hours um, as we're running this class um, synchronously. Um, I want to, like, set your project up when we meet, let you draw, and then meet again. And so you may not have finished this assignment, but we'll see an in-process. 
Um, and I can also look at your projects from last week if you didn't email me or send me somehow an image. So I'll share my screen again and the Zoom will time out in about three minutes. But as I'm sharing this screen, I will um, uh, mute the video so you can just ask me questions um, or I'll have the chat open during this Got video. So let Slide me know. Right the and now we transform a square into a cube. I've got him on super fast. Just let me know if you have any questions. Um, I've got the chat open. We'll just watch him draw these shapes. So these are, this is really for the people who aren't able to draw in the 18 by 24 and really tone the whole paper. Uh, if you don't have your kit yet, you may just be drawing with your sketchbook and a pencil. So this would be an, a, another appropriate way to do the assignment. Uh, I don't expect you to shade the whole 18 by 24 paper with pencil because it would just be impossible for you. Um, so you want to work smaller in your sketchbook uh, in order to achieve the, the components of the lesson today to understand what, what we're doing. So he's drawing these simple shapes like a soup can, a pyramid, a cube, a sphere from imagination most likely. Uh, but today I would like you to actually find those objects in your house and if you can't find any I'd like you to make your own. And I'd actually like you to look at real things as you draw so that you can observe how the light works on these simple shapes. Uh, so that's just a little bit different than what he's doing, but I thought that this was a nice example of shading simple shapes with pencil. Let me know if you have any questions as they pop into your head. You can chat them to me in the group or you can just yell them out. And we kind of have less than a minute, so um, when the Zoom stops, uh, this, this portion will be done. And I will have this video up online for you to watch again if need be. And I'll see you at two, and I'll send the Zoom link in Blackboard. Okay, so I guess that's pretty much it for today, folks. Um, email me if you have any questions. Try to draw big. I know that's going to be a new challenge. And I'll see you at two. Bye.